Hello everyone, and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew, with you here as always. This is Go Again, a fabulous video cast covering the trading card game Flesh and Blood. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! Hey folks, welcome back to Dice Commando and Go Again a Fabulous Cast. Thank you for joining me again for the second of our, you know, kind of opening week deck tech series. So tonight I'm going through uh, my Prism Haymaker deck, right? I talked about this way earlier on. This is what I was excited about. It's not a very expensive deck. And actually I'm even willing to step back on a couple of cards. So join me tonight as we go through my Prism Haymaker Blitz deck. Alright folks, so let me just say before we get into this, this this text really, really simple and straightforward to play. Uh, I mean, I again, this, this was kind of what I touted early, you know, I think it was a couple weeks ago. I talked about just throwing haymakers and I mean, that, that's what this deck does and, and it keeps it keeps the pressure on. So I do want to talk about one game I kind of fell into a pitfall trap. I'll talk about that kind of at the end. Um, but but overall, it just, it just does good stuff. Uh, and again... I know that there's a lot of fear out there about you know playing brute, and, and I think that's I think that's legitimate. Uh, but we've found that again, you're still drawing out a lot of their good cards. And again, if, if it's there, there, there's two things on that on brute, right? Or at least that we found in our testing on, on brute is if, if you pull their six out, they start running out of or their six or more out. They start running because you know that's that's how they get cards banished, right? So. If Levia doesn't banish a card, she loses her blood debt. So by drawing those sixes out, you you put that additional pressure on of them actually maybe being forced to take blood debt, even if they don't take your damage. So it kind of works for you in both ways. And then again, Reinar, a lot of his stuff requires from hand. So kind of getting into now, it's not necessarily as bad for Reinar, obviously, because a lot of times he's trying to get down to a three card hand is kind of his, his thing. So Reinar is a little more of a threat. I, I will grant you that. But you do have those blinding beams, and again, you're still drawing out. You're still drawing out as sixes. So, all right, let, let's go into this list. So, uh, I'm playing Iris of Reality. Now, you could you could play the Majestic. I just kind of figured that like, I kind of like the fact that this deck's relatively cheap to play, uh, and I like to keep it there with the Iris. So, if if you want to play, if you want to play the the Majestic, you, you can. No problem there. The Scepter uh, equipments, the Skull Cap, Dream Weavers, the Cross Trap, the Boots, and then the Footsteps. Uh, so I, again, I don't have the Footsteps. I don't see why you wouldn't play the Footsteps with her if you, if you could. Uh, again, I, I know that doesn't necessarily make this very budget. I mean, I'm not trying to be budget. I just, you know, it's, it's cheap because there's not a lot of, cheaper because there's not a lot of Majestics in there, but the, a, a three pitch, a, a Herald into, a Herald that they six into Footsteps into another Herald is, is a very real and repeatable play. And it's too good to ignore the footsteps, right? Because it's just too devastating. Because you, you you would lead with like your six herald, and then they would, you know, do their thing, and then you pop that all on a three pitch, and uh, it's I don't know, it's it's good stuff. So yeah, again, just just run the footsteps, just do it. So red, we're running two fate for scene. We run in two enigma chimera, two for eight vanilla, two for like vanilla two for eight, crazy. All right. Herald of Protection, Herald of Ravages, that's the one that deals the Arcane. Herald of Tenacity, that's the Herald of Dominate. Herald of Triumph, uh, two Phantasmoclasms, so that is a Majestic. And I will be honest, uh, I think you could actually arguably cut the Phantasmoclasm because it's the th it's a three, and it obviously is super good because it goes in their hand and fishes it out. But I found a lot of the times that uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't playing it. So I, I think functionally, like, I don't think it's the end of the world if you're not running Phantasmoclasm. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, two Phantasmophies, that one is in there as a red pitch only. And that's because you just combine that. That's your Dreamweavers play, right? You pop Dreamweavers, that one, you get a three pitch, you drop the, uh, pop the Dreamweavers and Phantasmify into one of your two drops, and boom, you're swinging for 12. 
and it's not fixable, right? So uh, brutal. Uh, two sink belows and then two red war tune herald. Well, obviously we're talking red, so war tune herald. Uh, going into yellows, so we're playing blinding beam yellow. We're playing blue. No, we're not playing the the red blinding beam. Uh, so two yellow beams, two celestial beat downs. F U and the A beat downs. Uh, two triumphs, two pummels. Pummels really dirty in this. If you can pull it off, but we're only playing the two pitch. Uh, the reason we're playing the two is because we need the two pitches for a lot of the two costs. And and functionally, I like to put. I would like to put Pummel in my arsenal because uh, you don't really, like generally with her, you just kind of need a two card hand. You need a two pitch and you need one of your twos, one of your, you know, one of your, one of your haymakers that all generally cost two. Uh, and then two yellow heralds for blues are running two beams, two chimeras there again, because that's a two for six, which is not too shabby. Uh, two protections, two ravages, and then two spears of surreality. So that's the one with go again. I'll be honest, I don't believe I've used that very much. It really just becomes kind of a functional blue pitch there. So in ter in terms of strategy, like, like I said, you really only generally need one attack and then one pitch. So you need it. You need a two card hand, but a lot of times you can do that from arsenal. Because if you can, for some reason, put on, I mean, it, which is not on that uncommon here, right? You're swinging for seven, you know, six or seven. So it's not uncommon for you to get a turn where you have a card left over to arsenal. So you, you want to arsenal either your pummel or you want to arsenal your attack. Uh, don't make the mistake that I've made. A so let, let's go ahead and talk about Blinding Beam. A couple of things there. So don't make the mistake that I've made, which is putting Blinding Beam in your arsenal, right? You think, oh, it'll be great. I'll put it there and then I can pop it when I use it. A lot of times it ends up sitting there for a long time and it ends up clogging you up. So I generally advise advise not doing that. Now, one of the things, so there was a game uh, where Josh was playing Bolton and I was playing against him and I ended up getting really screwed at the end because my blinding beams were clunked in my deck because obviously he didn't have a bunch of sixes. So the point of this is when you're playing somebody who doesn't have sixes, you're going to end up pitching those because you're, you know, you're not using them. And you want to be careful about halfway through the game, I think, is where you need to flip over. And you want to actually start using those effectively for defense, right? You want to pitch and use that to actually decrease the attack value on an attack action. Because what will happen at the end of the game, especially versus someone like like Bolton who, who's weapons focused, is you'll end up with, because they don't defend, right? So you'll end up with these cards that don't defend, and then you'll have four cards in your deck that don't defend. So you do need to, that, that was what I learned uh, last night, no, two nights ago, sorry, that was what I learned two nights ago was you do, you have to, you have to burn them, otherwise they're going to be dead cards for you. So that was a good learning there. So, uh, you know, like I said, make sure you don't put it in your arsenal because it'll end up clogging you up and make sure you do use them so that when you get to the end of your deck, you're not, you're not sitting on nothing but uh, zero defenses because that'll, that'll end your game before it needed to end. Uh, other than that, it's it's really all pretty strong. Uh, the cataclysm is is pretty. I do think two cataclysms correct in here because you know every time one of these things hits, it goes into your soul. There's really nothing else that pops your soul or that you're spending from your soul unless you're using. Because um, a lot of times I will create the token to to kind of because you right you can pitch two as an instant with her pop one out of your soul and create the token. I, I do use that from time to time. Generally with Chain, I've been using that. But again, the other great thing about Cataclysm, remember, is it's a two pitch, which is exactly what you need for a lot of our haymakers. So the, this deck's really very, very, very functional. Yeah, I haven't found a lot of turns where I've been sitting with stuff I don't need. Now, you, you do notice there's there's a heavy amount of reds. That's because what you need to functionally be thinking about as you're going through this is that you, you need to prefer to toss your reds. And I don't know why you wouldn't be doing that generally anyway, if you play your red and like pitch a yellow or blue, I, I don't know why you wouldn't be doing that anyway. But you know, if you have a choice, generally you want to arsenal a red versus versus something else. But I mean, if, if it's stuck in your hand, you're going to do what you're going to do, right? So I get that. Now, one card that did come up uh, is Soul Shield. You'll notice that's that's lacking in here. So Soul Shield, it's Soul Shield. Man, I can't say that. Is a light defense reaction, majestic. Put it into your hero's soul when the combat chain closes. It's two for six. Uh, playing this, this is just good. Uh, we have now the disclaimer and why it's on the deck is that we haven't tested with it yet. Uh, but Josh had it in his Bolton deck. He had a one of it in his Bolton deck, and I was like, "Huh, that's really interesting," because you know, Cataclysm or you know, Fu in the A is 
pretty decent with the play it for zero, chuck them. Like it's a pretty decent because it, again, and it doesn't um, it doesn't have phantasm, right? So if you can do that into a phantasm for two, I mean that's that's especially in blitz that's pretty much because you've already pulled off your dream reverse at that point. Like that's pretty devastating, right? So. Uh, I do like this. I don't. I don't know that you'd play two of this. And like I said, we haven't tested it, um, but it, but it's it's something to think about. So um, where that would fit in, I don't know. Maybe that takes the pummel slot. Like that's kind of my tech slot as the pummel, right? And I'd say I pull that off in like fifty percent of the games. But again, it's one of those things that when you do, it's just freaking brutal because they're like, oh, all right, well, I'm gonna take six, I'm gonna take seven, and then you throw a pummel out, and they're like, oh. Well, now I'm taking two more and I lose a card. Well, that sucks. So um, I don't know. Yeah, may, maybe maybe that is the way to go. Yeah, I have to play right around with it. I, I don't know that I would want to decrease the number of haymakers that are in here. Um, but yeah, that's that's something something for, for me to try and for you guys to try also. So be interested to hear uh, your guys' feedback on this. Like I said, it went... Like I said, way back in the Waymac machine, it, when I looked at doing the Aura thing, it just like seemed like too much work to me. Um, I'd rather just kind of sit and toss stuff out and make my opponent be on the be on the defensive. Um, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So anyway, thanks folks for for joining me tonight. I'm really uh, interested to hear people's people's feedback and experience with with Prism as well. I know there's a lot of fear about Brute, but like man, she she seems pretty freaking good to me. So um, yeah. So if you guys are looking for singles, don't forget Fab Foundry, my buddy over there. He's been doing pack cracks all week. Uh, he'll, he'll have your first edition and, and your unlimited singles. Make sure to use the link below um, when you're making your purchase over there. And, and I do see a kickback from that, which, which is much appreciated to help me get my cardboard crack. And of course, if you're in a card drought and you're looking for that unlimited stuff, let our friends over at Gone Guy know. You can use code COMMANDO10 at checkout and save 10% off your purchase, free shipping over 25. I don't see a kickback from them, but they're my LGS and help us do stuff like the skirmish, which was very recently announced, very recently announced by them, which we're hoping to do in person. Looking like we're gonna get it done in person. So great news there. So anyway, thanks folks for joining me very much today. Please like, subscribe, get engaged in the conversation below. If nothing else, folks, go commando.